the folks for today's show today's cooking show i'm going to be making spanish rice now i'm in the philippines so you could call it mexican rice and uh, now <laughs> this ain't filipino rice it ain't got nothing to do with filipino food i just happen to be in the philippines right now so i'm going to make mexican rice or you can call it spanish rice whatever you want to call it but it's going to be some very delicious rice she has no idea maybe she's tasted it before at the mexican restaurant but, but you ain't never ate my rice. And so if you want to how, to how to make some delicious sort of Mexican Pacific style rice, I'm going to come up with a great name for it. I'm going to put my own spin on Spanish rice because I'm here in the Pacific. Uh, just wait and see. Okay. You want to know how to make some great rice. Just watch this video. I don't have a recipe. All my recipes are right up here in my head. So they just flow into the pan and out comes deliciousness. So if you want to know how to make it, just watch the video, take some notes. That's how we used to do it old school. Old school, you went to class and you took notes. That was it. Wasn't no free PDFs and shit online. No, you sat down with your pencil, your paper, you took notes. That's my generation. So you want to know how to make it? Watch the video, take some notes. There you go. Thanks for joining me. If you're not a subscriber right there, hit that overstay road sign, get on board my train. I certainly appreciate it. Here we go. Hey, maybe this. The big, the big tomato or the small? Uh, don't matter. Either way. You're or if I'm big, I, I just use one. No, if you get the big tomatoes, do three. Small tomatoes, do six. I know, but onion, mine onion. Oh, the yeah. onions? Give me the small onions. Give me uh, two small onions. Vinny, don't put too many onions in the sauce. I didn't put too many onions, Polly. I put two small onions. I'm done here in the interest of time. Is up task wife number two. We're chopping it up. We got tomatoes in there. No, Matt. You better keep looking. I, I, I bought a bunch of tomatoes at the market. They're in there somewhere. No, Matt, Matt, you don't look in there. Oh, look, oh. Dig, dig, girl. Dig, dig, dig. Dig, dig, dig. Get your skinners on them tomatoes. I know they're in there. I need them tomatoes, baby. What can I do that I don't know? Lighten up, Francis. Folks, y'all see that angry? What do they call it here? Is that tampo? What's tampo mean, baby? <laughs> you think it's all fun and games being married to a full peanut? It's not. Okay? I don't have it! Because of what? Tomatoes, baby. You don't need the list to look for tomatoes. Just dig, dig, dig. Deeper. Deeper. Oh, here they are right here. They're in there somewhere. Oh, they're in there somewhere. They're in there somewhere. Let me take another look. I just need one of these. I know. Spicy, yummy. I said I just need one. No, not in the list. Oh, see? I know. There's not tomato. That's the orange. Oh. Look at that. I think it's I think it's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. <laughs> Where's the money, Lebowski? Oh, I want that money, Lebowski. Oh, where's the money, Lebowski? Oh, it's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. Oh. Uh, I think it's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. <laughs> Great movie. Put me three more on the baby. All right, so if you're taking notes, Five and five peel garlic cloves. All right. Go to work, old girl. The Big Lebowski. That's the name of the movie. The Big Lebowski. Honey, your tummy's doing peekaboo. Peekaboo. Your tummy too. Peekaboo.
They'll be Gordon Ramsay and be proud of your chopping skills. Can Brother catch you? No. You too fast? What's the purpose of the glasses, baby? My my hat is uh, my eyes so pretty. From the light? No, from the no. From the onions? So baby, those are safety glasses against the onions. You look like a movie star. Good job, sweetie. Hey, where's my tomatoes? I said, one reason I can't wash the dishes is because my tummy's too big. Okay, well that's a good point, baby. When I got a big old beer belly, a man's got a big old beer belly, he can't reach the dishes. He's like over here like this because it's too much. That's why you gotta stay slim and trim. Only the juice that you need? Yeah, I need, the, I need the everything. Yeah, just cut the just cut the ends off, baby, and then I'll crush them. That's it. That's all you gotta do. I'll take it from there. All right, folks. Now, I didn't have any tomatoes, so I had to go to the store and I picked up some tomatoes. And I told her just to chop them up because really what I need is uh, tomato paste. Now back there in the back, I do have some spaghetti sauce, but that's that's a totally different flavor. So I just picked up some fresh tomatoes. So what you want to do, step one in making homemade uh, tomato paste or sauce, whatever. Step one, wash your hands real good. There you go, that's step one of the process. Let's get you a clean bowl right here. Okay, make sure you get the right angle on the dangle. Now, I could sit here and pulverize these things and to do a scientific uh, Gordon Ramsay method where you put them in the blender and all that stuff. But you know what? If you put these things in a blender, it's not eco-friendly. Let me show you how to do it. You put them 26-inch pythons on it right there and just squeeze it. Just squeeze it just like that. Put them pythons. Oh, Lord, I got one jumped out. We'll wash them off in a minute. Hey. Put them 32 inch pythons. Oh, just shot the camera. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, there you go. Look, no need for electricity. No need to get the Google squirrels. You just, you just put that old man grip on them. You ever shake hands with a man that's like 98 years old? That joker got a grip that'll just about break your hand. Well, that's what you do with these tomatoes. Now I'm gonna try three at a time. I'm gonna swap over to these guns over here. Check out them guns right there. Oh my goodness, losing some of the juice due to the violence of the process here. Like I'm milking a cow. What the heck? That's how you make homemade uh, tomato paste slash tomato sauce right there. That's all you gotta do right there. My hands are clean. You know, that's how they make wine. They stomp on it with the bare feet with them grapes. There you go. Voila! I'm a damn culinary genius. Don't worry, Gordon. One day you'll learn these techniques, my friend. Step three, wash hands. Okay, folks, so before we start this little how-to session on the best, I think I'm gonna call it Spanish Tropical. How's that sound? Spanish tropical or Mexican tropical? Maybe. Anyhow, before we get started, run through our list of ingredients. You obviously need some rice, not cooked. We're gonna cook the rice. Don't put the 
rice out of the rice cooker, stuff will end up being mush. Now you need the regular rice. Now in just a minute, I'm going to have her go ahead and rinse that rice for me. But just uh, uncooked rice. Now, I've got two Knorr chicken cubes because I don't have any chicken broth. A bunch of tomatoes if you have tomato paste, but I think this is better because those are fresh tomatoes. A little bit of salt. I've got a uh, rum and coke right there. And that's not for, oh, that's not for the recipe. That's for the cook. Um, just go through the spices. I've got a little crushed red pepper. Oh, that's two different cayennes there. Just I'm going to put just a sprinkle of cayenne pepper. I'm not making it too spicy or the babies and Fatima won't eat it. This is uh, paprika. It's not Nescafe. She put the paprika in there. I always put a touch of brown sugar. Pretty much anything I do. That little touch of brown sugar at the end, it just makes it. But the main ingredients, right back there, we got garlic, a red bell pepper, onions. Then I've got, what I got over here? Cilantro, uh, basil, and I got one pepper. And the pepper is just going to lay in there for uh, seasoning, not chopping it up. What did I say? A little salt here. Now this is what's going to make it. And the old lady does not like uh, coconut milk in my cooking. When I put it in there and I don't tell her, she, uh, she loves it. That's what's going to make it. That's what's going to give it the tropical. It's going to be different than the, what you're used to in a Mexican restaurant. So that's pretty much my list of ingredients. I'm going to start out with just a little bit of olive oil. That's probably more than two teaspoons. Some people hit me and say I use too much oil in my cooking, but if you use olive oil, you, you can never use too much oil. I mean, I eat that stuff straight with bread. You can never use too much olive oil. All right, so spread that around, get this thing heated up, make sure the oil is hot for the rice. So I'll just throw the garlic, the peppers, and the onions in here first. And we're just going to stir this around a little bit and get it going. The smell coming off of that right there is just outstanding. Take your rice, add in the rice. Now it's a lot of rice. Maybe I put too much rice, but we got to keep stirring this rice. And what we're trying to do is toast the rice. And I'm going to go with a little bit more olive oil. Now if you're using vegetable oil and all that stuff, yeah, you want to use that stuff sparingly. But uh, olive oil, don't worry about it. Just, I mean, I can drink that stuff. And we're just going to toast it up a little bit. Come in here with your uh, tomato paste. Really, that's nothing but crushed up fresh tomatoes. Oh, that smell is wonderful. Come in there with one Dixie cup full of water. And for me, it's a two to one ratio. Oh shit, this is cold. This is supposed to be hot. It's not supposed to be cold. So there you go. There's two redneck Dixie cups full of water. And we just stir this around. Now remember, this, this rice has to cook. This is not cooked rice. Coming out of the rice cooker, ladies. If, if you take the rice out of the rice cooker, it's just gonna be jello by the time you get it done. Paprika. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful color. It's like a, uh, uh, what's the name, Bob Ross painting. I'm coming here with just a touch Sprinkle of cayenne pepper. I don't want to make it too spicy or else the old lady and the babies aren't going to like it. Come in here with just a sprinkle of salt. What is that? What is that, about a quarter? A quarter of one of them baby spoons. There's been a couple times I've made it too salty. Made my dishes too salty. Just getting carried away with the salt. Here you go. Here's these chicken cubes. Now if you have chicken broth, you want to use chicken broth, but I didn't have uh, chicken broth, so I just had to go to the Sorry Sorry store. Pick up two of these Knorr flavor cubes. There's one in the pool. And one more. Make sure I got chicken and not pork or uh, any other flavor. Which, you know what? It doesn't matter. If you use pork, beef, or chicken, it'll be delicious. 
just don't use the shrimp or the fish it's just too strong and not not even a natural flavor don't recommend those but here we go there's a second cube going into the drink what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my basil I'm gonna sprinkle that basil in there now you see I got the cilantro I got the cilantro but I'm not putting the cilantro in until last so I'm saving that in reserve over here and we'll stir that up one more time before we set it and cap it just put that pepper right like that and what you want to do is turn it down to simmer to low and just go ahead and cap it and at the 20 minute mark I'll take the lid back off and check it but don't stir it so we're at the 20 minute mark right now and I'm going to quickly add some crushed red pepper and the cilantro and then I'm going to drizzle it you got to drizzle it so this this is the drizzle I'm going to drizzle it with these three ingredients right here coco mama fresh gata that's what it looks like after roughly 20 minutes oh look at that steam coming out of there oh my goodness now look, this thing is still cooking, so I'm not going to mess around. Sprinkle the cilantro on the top, and then just uh, sprinkle the crushed red pepper over the top. Get that in there. And now we're just going to drizzle the coconut milk in here. Look at how beautiful that is on the presentation. There you go. And just cap it. Keep it on low about another five to ten minutes folks that's all it is to this dish now I said I'm gonna cap it for uh, 10 minutes but at about a five minute mark that looked like it was almost done maybe in about three minutes I'm gonna go ahead and kill the heat and just let the natural heat because that, that cast iron retains heat so it's gonna continue to cook mmm smells delicious I say three minutes th that's it but there you go I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call it. Maybe I just call it a Mexican tropical rice. I think of something else. I got to come up with a catchy name. It'll be in the title, obviously. But that's just a little spin to it. It's a little different than you're going to be used to in a Mexican restaurant. Everybody has their own special recipe. But that's my recipe. Now, if I really wanted to make this into a meal, I would have just cut up some, some chicken, you know, boneless chicken breast, whatever. Just cut up some chicken, sauteed that initially uh, with the garlic and the onions, and this would be an outstanding meal. And I may do that the next time. I was just going for rice today, but uh, with a little bit of chicken, I mean, you could feed a bunch of people with that. They'll love it. Trust me. If it were just for me, I would go heavier on the heat, heavier, heavier on the peppers. But my Filipina, she doesn't like spicy foods. Neither do the babies too much. I mean, Forrest Gio eat it, Maria won't. So I had to go real light on the spices. But uh, if, if I, it was just me cooking for me and me and the boys, I'd hit it with the spice. I'd turn it into a man's dish. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed this cooking show as much as I did and about... About one more minute and I'm killing the heat and that's going to be all she wrote. It'll continue to, to, to cook a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't know the physics behind water soaking into a grain of rice. But you don't want to overcook it. It's either going to burn or it's going to turn to mush. Some of the recipes you're going to see out there will say 30 minutes. Um, I say cap it for 20 and then take a look at it. But don't stir it around because then it'll get all jacked up. Cooking is what? It's an art and a science all together. What's cooking? Let's reduce it down. You put the meat on the heat, add some vegetables and spices, and, and see what happens. That's all cooking is. It's not complicated. You don't got to go to culinary school to learn how to chop up a damn carrot or an onion. You don't got to. You don't got to go pay $50,000 to teach people how to chop, teach you how to chop up an onion. It just don't work like that grandmothers around the world they're the best cooks in the world they ain't never been in no damn culinary school uh, let's go ahead and kill the heat go ahead and shut her down when you're cooking with cast iron folks if you think the dish needs five more minutes um, cut the heat at the five more minute mark 
it's still going to continue to cook. All right, folks, here we go. So the steam stopped coming out. I mean, it's still hot. We're going to go ahead. Oh, look at that steam. We're going to uncap that and just take a look right there. Man, that looks beautiful right there. We're going to fluff it up. The smell coming off of this is absolutely just outstanding. I'm going to let it rest a little bit, let it breathe. I could have used more tomatoes if I wanted to make it look a little bit more like Mexican rice. Now it's got to rest a little bit, get some of that steam out of there. But what do you think, baby? No taste. Huh? No taste. It's got no taste to it? No taste whatsoever? What's this? The coconut. Yeah, coconut. And the vegetables. But you need to add salt. It needs more salt? Yeah. I think what it needs is two more chicken cubes is what I think it needs. I only put two, that wasn't enough. It needs four chicken cubes. You can add a, a, a salt on it. It just needs salt? Okay, I think two more chicken cubes. She says more salt. What do you think, baby? You want to eat a bowl? Yeah. All right, get you a bowl. Coke. I'll put some lemon in there. Well, it didn't have my cigar in it until you picked it up and dropped it in there. Now it's got my cigar. In it. it was like that until the Filipina came and destroyed it. Baby, thanks for cleaning up. I'm always cleaning, baby. Oh, Lord. When? Oh, I need it so. Oh, yeah. Careful, that lid that lid's not tight, baby. Yeah, the lid's broken. You broke. Hey, easy on the tripod. Go ahead and stir it up one more time for me. Let some of that steam out. Baby, this is Mexican tropical. Uh, tropical? Tropical. Yeah, folks, there's only one thing that this thing needs. There you go. You put a little Worcestershire sauce on there. It don't need no salt. Just hit it with the Worcestershire. Get a good drizzle on it. That's all that dish needs right there. There you go right there. Just got to finish product. Still steaming. Still steaming. Like I said, you gotta let it rest a little while. But I just wanna check the flavor with the Worcestershire sauce. It's gonna clash with that coconut. It's just a hint of coconut. It's not over coconutty. Mexican rice tropical going down the hatch. Mmm. I'm out of here, folks. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace out.